Dr. Richard Findlay is an electromagnetic field safety specialist, and he's going to be measuring the strength and frequency of the radio waves at different distances from the mast. So first we're going to put the probe right up on the middle of the transmitter. Yes, okay, that's right. Let's go for it. Maximum reading was 550. 551.6%. So basically, if you were to strap yourself to that transmitter three meters up there, you'd be getting five times the guidelines. Yes, you'd be over exposed. Okay, but no one's going to do that. No. Okay, so shall we go over there, which is what, what would you say there's two or three meters in that direction and see how the signal drops off? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, 14.5. So even over that distance, we've gone from we've gone down by a factor of of, of <laughs> what is that? That's 50 more than yeah, 50 times. Yeah, 550 down to 14.5. Okay, so down to less than a fifth of the government safety guidelines. Yes. Right, time to try and make sense of those readings with physicist and cancer researcher David Grimes. So we've seen there that the power drops off really, really quickly as you move away from the transmitter. Absolutely, and that's what you'd expect. As you get further and further away from a source of light, which of course radio frequency really is, even if we can't see it, the drop-off is really, really rapid. And by the time you're uh, you know, even an appreciable distance away from any kind of transmitter, it's way more likely that your phone itself is going to be emitting a lot more than any of these transmitters are. Do you think one of the worries about 5G is that there's talk of using higher frequency radio waves? I think so, absolutely. I think people have an intuitive understanding that higher frequency is higher energy. But I think what people really need to be aware of is that this kind of radiation is still very, very non-ionizing. What that means is it doesn't have the fundamental energy to liberate an electron and cause damage. If you want to cause, say, cancers and things like that, you typically need to cause that kind of DNA damage. And the new 5G spectrum is very low energy. It's much lower energy than, say, visible light. But more than that, the biophysics itself, the, uh, the, the mechanics of how you might develop a cancer or something, we know that this kind of radiation is non-ionizing. It cannot cause the level of DNA damage that you typically expect or need to cause a cancer. And so for that reason, the combination of epidemiological evidence and biophysical evidence, we don't have any current cause for concern. That being said, it's always good to observe and keep an eye on trends to see what might emerge, but we don't expect anything will. So there you go, some real science, which I hope has helped you to understand how safe 5G signals are. And just for extra information, we're now taking a reading at head level here on the roof, right next to the 5G transmitter and the number is kind of bouncing around the 2% mark. So even if you're walking on a rooftop next to a 5G transmitter as we are, you're still 50 times below the recommended safety level.